need everyone's prayers this morning. I thought Brother Elisha spoke some very true words this morning. And this world, it seems as if it put so much in front of our eyes trying to entice us and trying to put things that would cloud our mind and take them off the Lord this morning. It seems as even if, even though I know better sometimes, but oh, I still fight the things that I even know better that I shouldn't, that I shouldn't be doing and the things that I know would take my focus, I would still slip up this morning. I would hope for what minute of time that I would stand before you that maybe I would be able just to say one or two words that would make you consider your relationship with you and God today. And this world, that the Bible says like this, it says to be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, he walketh about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You know, Brother Elisha, I truly believe that to some people it doesn't matter this morning that, Mama, I could tell all the testimonies that I have in my life. I could try to put it out just as plain as I could, Brother Elisha. I could take everything that I've seen and lay it out and they would look and they would say, well, you put no scripture with that or you don't have enough church <coughs> you don't have enough stories from the Bible and then I could take and I could preach everything from the word of God, Brother Elisha and never deviate from a single word and they would look and they would say, well, it's not real enough to me. Those are just stories, Brother Elisha. I guess what I'm trying to tell you is that if you don't want to find him this morning, he's not going to force you to. He's not going to make you, Brother Josh. He's not going to cram it down you. And if you're looking for excuses, guess what? I'm sure of it, that you will find something to put in your life today. It doesn't matter yeah. of what it is this morning. I'm telling you that there's one thing that matters to me in this world, no matter as much as I can deviate and I can stumble and I can fumble around. Uh, but there's one thing when I come into my right mind, Papa, uh, there's only one thing that matters. There's only one thing that brings this young man true joy in my life, uh, uh, Papa. And that's what the Lord gives me, that I can be the most miserable uh, uh, man. love to just get down and cry on my floor. Uh, uh, I was thinking, I was thinking, woe to me. I can be just like that, Momo. And, and I can get down and I can begin to talk to this man. And I could begin to pour my heart out. And, and, I, would, and I would get down wanting to cry, Sister Kathy. And, and then it, he would make me stand up shouting a little bit, thanking him uh, uh, for everything that I have this morning. Uh, uh, I want you to understand this morning that there is power and, and there is goodness in my Lord today. Because you know what? Uh, 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 Papa, I've never, I've never deserved one good word to come out of my mouth when I get into I deserve to fall on my face every time. But yet for some reason my God has so much grace and so much forgiveness that He would overlook all everything and begin to look right down in my heart for the gods. I'm telling you this morning that the Bible says like this. It says that ye are the light of the world. It says that a city set upon a hill not be hid this morning. It says, neither do a man light a candle and put it under a bushel, but, but he takes and he puts it on a candlestick and it giveth light unto the whole house. It says, let your light so shine before men that, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. 
Well, Paul, I would want to ask this world today, are you, are you being influenced more? Are you influencing more? Everyone around you, because i got news, Brother Thomas, I question myself a, a, a whole lot sometimes, saying, am I doing enough for you, Lord? A, a, a Lord, am I showing this world that I'm standing for you enough, or, I'm le- or am I trying to show it that, that I can fit in right with it, Brother Thomas? You know, you need to ask yourself, that sometimes <laughs> are you being the more dominant influence in your life are you showing <laughs> last week I began to go to the bathroom back here and I seen a little letter <laughs> sitting on the wall and I just stopped and I began to read it because <laughs> I seen Momo had written a little letter a letter that I hadn't wrote and I just thought I need a little bit of wisdom from that sister Tammy <laughs> and I just sat back there and read it sister Crystal I'm telling you, <laughs> are you putting yourself out there enough? Are you <laughs> letting God use you today? Are you being a tool for Him? <laughs> or, is it, or is the world influencing you a little bit? Because guess what, Papa? <laughs> I, I, I would never stand up here and preach <laughs> on my grandparents to you that they are great. <laughs> but it's the one that they're serving that we're trying to get across to you. <laughs> <laughs> just using a couple of their servants to show you <laughs> what goodness will come from serving the Lord and what greatness <laughs> will come out of those fruits right there. Yeah. I'm telling you, God, He's been so good to me. There's been so many times in my life where this world will look and they would say there's nothing to that story. There's nothing to that little bit, but to me, Brother Elisha, there's been times where just a little crumb from the master's table, just a little crumb, Papa would tell me, it would speak right to my very heart and say, push on. You know, when I was living up in Michigan and my children, they were all real little and they were all pretty young and I guess Kayla was probably only about six and... Uh, uh, Erica had come in with some groceries and she began to uh, uh, Kayla run over to me and said, Dad, my legs hurt me so bad. And uh, 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 oh, I was trying to unload the groceries and I just pushed her away. And I said, uh, I, I said, sis, just give me a little bit. And she come in again and she said, Dad, my legs hurt me so bad. And uh, 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 I blew her off one more time and I said, sis, I got to get these groceries in the house. And uh, uh, my Oh, I just kept unloading and I began to hear something, <laughs> some words coming from our living room. And <laughs> I heard Kayla in there in, <laughs> in our living room and she had her little hand over on her leg and she was praying. <laughs> and she was saying, Lord, my leg hurts so bad, would you help me? <laughs> you want to talk about dropping everything that I had and running in and getting right down on the floor <laughs> and praying with her and saying, Thank you, Lord, for saying, for showing me that maybe I'm, I've stumbled on the right path a little bit, that I'm giving them a little something. I got news, Jonathan may not remember ever getting up in my arms, but guess what? There's a seed being planted, whether he wants it or not. Guess what? He doesn't have a choice because his parents, they put him in a position where they've already given him the seed, whether he wants it or not, and guess what? <laughs> you can't take that away from them, Brother Josh. Thank God for you today. <laughs> and thank God for Sister Sabrina this morning. Now let's stand on the Lord a little bit more. <laughs> and let's push on it and show this world that guess what? Whether you want them or not, we're going to serve them today. <laughs> oh, whether you want to admit he's real, guess what? He's real in my life. He's more real than anything that I have today. I plan and I plan so much. And I plan, well, maybe I'll do this and maybe I'll do that. Oh, and, you know, we try to get all these things, but when it all about, when the whole bottom line is I found myself just down on my knees last night saying, Lord, Lord, if my plans are not your plans, then just take them away. Lord, if anything would hinder me from serving you, if anything that I think is great, if anything that I'm planning, Lord, is not going to get me closer to you, Lord, then I don't want it in my life, God. And I'm not standing here saying I'm great because for every one of those, there's 50 mistakes that I make and I'm just being real with you. But every so often, the Lord would speak to us and He'd put us in the right mind and I'm God news for you. I don't want anything today that's going to stop me from serving Him. 
I want this lost world to understand what I'm talking about this morning. I want them to understand how bad that they need the Lord. That the greatest thing that I've ever found in my life was this man named Jesus, set a young, just a young 20 year old, lost and didn't have a clue where to go, began to cry to this man named Jesus and just told him, Lord, Lord, help me and show me the ways. And I'm telling you, I found a pearl of such great price that I would have sold everything that I had this morning. That I would have given anything up in order to obtain it. Papa, you know, in one place it's written like this. It says that a Pharisee man, he began to tell Jesus, he began to tell him to come and have dinner at his house. And it said there was a certain woman in that city, it said a sinner. She heard that, that Jesus was eating with this Pharisee man and she went over to his house. And she said, and she brought her a box of oil. And as soon as she went into the house, it said that she never left his feet, but she began to cry and wash his feet with the tears of her eyes. And he used her very hair to wipe off and clean his feet. And she took that oil and began to anoint it. And it said that that Pharisee man, he looked over, uh, uh, probably at one of his buddies, and it said he began to murmur and say, Doesn't Jesus know who that is? What is he doing? And it said that Jesus began to look at him and he said like this. He said there was two men. He said one he owed. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. And it said that one he owed 500 pence. And the other he owed 50. And both of them men, they came time to pay. And they went to that creditor and no one had any money to give them. And that creditor, he looked at them. <laughs> and he told him, he said, both your debts are forgiven. <laughs> you are free from that. And Jesus, he looked at that Pharisees and he said, which one of these men loved them the most? Yeah. Jesus, he looked at him and he said, I guess the one. <laughs> or that Pharisee looked at Jesus and he said, I guess the one that he forgave the most. And he said, rightly, have you judged? He said, I've come into your home. He said, you offer me no water to wash my feet. This woman has washed, her, uh, washed my feet with the tears of her eyes. Uh, uh, took her hair and cleaned it up. He said, no oil did you add? No, you did not anoint my head. Uh, uh, but this woman has not ceased. Uh, he, he said, he said to mu who, who much is, is forgiven, they love the most, don't they? Uh, he looked at that woman and said, your sins are forgiven. Well, guess what? Uh, a long time ago, I felt like I had a heap and amount of sin uh, uh, piled up on my shoulders, Brother Elisha, so much so uh, uh, that at times I would feel like it weighed me down so much to where uh, I would have to find me a little dark corner somewhere uh, and I would begin to cry to this man named Jesus. And when I turned my heart to him, He'd forgive every pile. He'd forgive everything that I had didn't even remember to ask for forgiveness for. This man, he asked nothing of me. He just said to love me. You know, a man come to Jesus and he said, what is the greatest commandment? And he said to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is just like unto that first one. Is to love thy neighbor as thyself. He doesn't ask a whole lot of you today. He asks that you love them with everything that's in you. He doesn't ask for you to go and sell every possession that you have and go and live with the poor and go and do all these things. All he says is to love me with your whole heart. To just look to him. He takes care of the rest from there. I hope that if you're here today and you don't know this man that you would consider the words that Brother Elisha has said and, and the words that I've tried to put out there for you. Whether you love him or not, I promise you that he loves you. He said to cast your cares upon me for I care for you. I found no greater love in this world than what this man has shown me. This man named Jesus has shown me there's no greater love, there's no greater. The Father that He is to me, 
I will always fall short when raising my children. It's not even a contest. I'm telling you, he loves you today. I'm going to let Brother Josh come on. Go ahead. <laughs>